What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 319, Make It Songbringer. <clears throat> Today, I am excited to have the shield effect finished. So this thing repel repels enemies as long as you aren't moving. Or if, you, if you're using a weapon, or you're doing any kind of action, your shield goes away. It only really happens when you take damage. So basically it's a small damage shield. As long as you're not taking any kind of actions, it's just like an automatic shield. Totally passive. So, oh, I do need to get a, an icon drawn for it. But it's almost finished. But today I'm gonna finish what I'm gonna work on. <laughs> nice one, Arboil. Today I'm going to work on is the Karsh. Get this Karsh finished up. This new enemy. The water enemy. So we'll throw one in. So there's two things that needs to happen with this guy. Um, you can see him like cruising around. He's shooting out these bubbles and stuff. First of all, he needs to be invisible when he moves from spot to spot, and the spots that he moves to need to be guaranteed to be open water. For example, if it's underneath a, a lily pad, it's really not open water. And... Yeah, what's up, Pedro? And the other thing is that the bubbles that he shoots out need to be more consistent. I want to shoot three bubbles at a time. And also the bubbles need to move at a vector. So they're going to move along, a, instead of moving along an actual eight compass direction, diagonal and or perpendicular, they'll move in any kind of vector. So first of all, let's do, where is it? It's, it moves around. You can see it clear when it's, when I turn on the debug. See that red spot? It warps all around the screen though, that's why. It's really weird. So yeah, I first need to make it so he warps to the right spots. And he gets invisible while he's warping. Alright, so that means I need some open water spots. And I think where I place the lily pads, I think that's probably a good place to... to place some open water. So a lily pad has a name component and a render component. And inside the render component, it has a position. Yeah, so it pushes back a bunch of positions and then when it's done, oh, it, it conditionally places frogs at those positions. Okay. Oh. Sorry about that, Pedro. Hey, Bafu, what's up, buddy? So the place where it creates lily pads Oh, 
Papu's alive! This is really the only place where it does it. It does it here at Create Dirt 1 Ground, and I do want this to work. I want these enemies to be able, I want it to be able to create open water entities, even, um, even in the levels. So that means this needs to be another method, probably in world. Sure, yeah, if you really want to do that, if that's, if that's a lot of work, then I don't know. Oh, where's Azimris? Oh, I got to give points to Azimris. There we go. Hopefully Azenris remembers what his point count was before. Here's a bunch of the functions that run. Add gates, add cliffs, add lake, river, place stairs, count tiles. Uh, okay, where's the um uh, blending? Where's the other ones? The other blends. Okay, so these are the other blends that run. There's also account tiles, set ambience, choose background. I guess count tiles would probably be a good place to do it, but Maybe I'll make a function called create names places. So like this is in this example, what we want to do is um you know create the places that are called open water. This is gonna be a named place on the map around the current area where it's it's just a bunch of water. Surrounded by nothing, there's no lily pads. <laughs> nice. All right, so name places looks over all the tiles. What do I want? Uh, I don't I don't know. What do you want? So for each tile, K tiles water in X, in Y. Capture this. So what we're looking for is a bunch of 
look for water, like open water where there's no lily pad. Ooh, this totally means that this needs to be run before the lily pad is created. Wow, let's check that, let's see what happens. So which one of these runs first? So bam. <clears throat> oh good, create lily pad. Create dirt one ground, create. Oh, okay. This is called from create area. Oh, wow, that's just because create name places was never even called. So that means in world, you start calling create name places. You're gonna do the Great Resident Evil Marathon. Ooh. Yeah, this time we're gonna create name places first, which means the lily pads have not been created. So that means the lily pads really should be created based on open water, well, Gosh, this really doesn't matter at first. It really does not even matter. I can get, let's get rid of those. Let's create a bunch of open water. So for each tile, if this has near, what's this function? R tiles, I think. Yeah, R tiles. At the given position, width of three, height of three, K tiles, water. If everything is water around this point, And it's an odd number. If x equals, or if x mod 2 equals 0 and y mod 2, and we have everything around it water, then this is a potential position for open water. All right, so entity create name component open water and this needs to be pushed back to the entities for that area there Firewatch. All right, now I'm going to point, I'm going to place, I'll create name places. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh man, this is definitely should not be called from, um, 
from world. No way. No, no, no. Oops. Should be called from when it's creating the area. Like probably right here. It already created the background and the ground. Here we'll create name places. Create name places. I talked with Boogie about Bafu being disconnected. Wasn't there a super sophisticated approach to turn Bafu on just to DM Boogie? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember that, and I—I I don't know. I don't—I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to check it again to look it up. Alright, so now I just need to know where it created these points. Oh, it also needs a position component. Duh. All right, let's see where it put it those. All right, yeah, good, we got a few of these, good. Open water at all these points, zero, zero, two, zero. Okay, first thing I want that to be, those to be odd. Of course, these need to be one. So yeah, we got two, zero, a lot of these, but they should end by the time it gets higher up on the screen yeah so there's some little bit of open water at 18 16 14 12 but really the water stops at 8 Let's see that one more time with odd numbers Right, there we go, 19, 7. Now let's get the Karsh to start using the open water. So right now it jumps to lily pads. Now we'll make it jump to open water. And also, I'm going to make it animate. Or, actually, yeah, I'll make the car sh completely invisible first. Yeah, let's do a totally invisible <laughs> shot of the car. So this is it's kind of funny to do this, but really just taking this exact same image without any... any of these active, I can go make this just car sh
Just cars, yeah, that's fine. And put this in foes. So now he's got an invisible frame. We're the last people on earth. Rest in peace, everyone. Now I'm kind of worried about that because it it um oh it didn't overwrite or it did oh see it did cars zero damn that's not what I meant hold on so this re-render this get this first frame render this individually. Now we got an empty sprite and the other frames while he's doing his animation. This is a swimmy animation. Okay. <clears throat> Don't. <laughs> he left vacation early. The implications. Oh, what are the implications of this? So his idle animation is just Karsh. And then let's call this, is it launch or attack or shoot? Animate shoot. But I thought there was I gotta check this out. AI system. There's a point where it launches stuff. Start shot. There it is. Start shot. I th thought it played. Run parents shoot animation. Shoot. Yeah, you should just it should just run the shoot animation. Okay, so that means the Karsh needs a shoot animation. Like this. And it needs a release animation as well. But we don't have one yet. Pedro, how's your game turn now, man? Animation Karsh has no frames. What? Let's re render this. Okay, just didn't render it. It's pretty much done except for the art. All right, man. Cool. Oh, so that worked. Good. Let's see what this guy's doing. Should be warping from open water to open water spot. Yeah, cool. He did. He launched his little bubble. When he did the animation, where'd he go? Oh, he's way off the screen. Oh, he got me though. Uh, got me again. With the totally, you probably ship it with the current placeholders right on. Okay, 
he's really not he's not moving at all though to any of these open water spots jump to open water oh you know what i think the ai system never really i never really wrote the position component for behavior jump jump to a named location find all possible string val my pause Yeah, see, it's just using the render component. Ah. Uh, I thought position component had this a function. I think it does. No, it doesn't. Let's just add, add component. Pause. No, that's not it. Man, there really should be a, a method that takes, that gets either the entity's position from the render component or the position component. So I do that a lot. Yeah, let's do that. Would that be position system or position component? Position system would be the thing to do, but there is no position system. Maybe move system. Maybe I already wrote this function. Is valid position, is complete off screen, play footsteps, set speed, knockback. Or render system. Salad dogs, what's up? Arcane, yo. Oh, thanks, salad dogs. Cool. Created a new seed, Arcane, and it crashed on me three times in a row. Where? So where, where, and how did it crash on you? All right, so this is kind of an overdue method. This is just something that gets a position from either a render component or a position component. Oh, no, this is, no, I don't like it here. This really should go in position component. Yeah, let's go static void get. It's randomly run around the map because the seed does not have any dungeon entrances. Found like four different saves, and from time to time, the sound effects stop working and while well after the game crashes. Huh. And and what what um what platform are you playing it on? Windows, Mac. Linux, what if it's Windows, what kind of version of Windows you have? 
How much RAM do you have? You're on Windows. This is thoroughly odd. Well, let me take a look at it real quick. Once this is done building, oh, actually, I could just run it without building. Let's go to the World Arcane. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around the World Arcane in God mode so we can see what it's got. Windows 10, 8 gigs of RAM. You got a great computer. Yeah, I don't know why it's crashing for you then. Okay, so here's... Here's World Arcane. So there you go. There's where... This is where World... Do you want to see this even? I don't want to ruin it for you if, it's, if you don't want to see this, but... Yeah, so here's level one in the World Seed Arcane. And there is there is definitely plenty other levels. There's four, five, eight. So it just, it just randomly crashes you on, on you? Yeah, send me the save, please. That'd be great, yeah. I'll create a Trello item for it right now. This is really hard to pinpoint at this point what this might be. Random crashes are the worst. Do you get any kind of error message after when it crashes? Does it say why it crashed? What is there any kind of error log or report or anything that gets output into the screen or whatever? Yeah, pace bin's fine. So there, got this noted. Got a Trello item created for this. Hopefully at some point this bug reveals itself. I, I mean, obviously I'm playing here on Mac and that's a big difference. So maybe I'll try it on Windows at some point. You know, I'll, I'll get to my Windows bugs and try and figure out what's what's crashing it sometimes. Hopefully, Hopefully what happens is I go and I try it on Windows I enter the world seed arcane. Wait, you got a different ar wait, you got A B C D E F right here. Oh, and you have arcane. Okay, so it's in your one slot. Hmm. Let's put this on it as well. You found the problem? It's line 45? What? I just closed it. Damn. Ugh. Mega Seed Arcane. 
So, okay, but there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary happening when that happens. No error message. The game just freezes. Oh, it's oh, it's not crashing. It's just freezing. Oh, that's totally different. Oh, okay. Well, um. Actually, the game just freezes when I alt tab, it says not responding. Okay. All right. Thank you. That really helps to narrow it down. Actually, that's a lot different. I thought it was crashing. Freezing's different. Okay. All right. So we got this position component function, which gets a position given an entity or an ent fills up a position with either its actual position or its render component position. Here's a, here's a classic example of using it right there. Oh, and you know what? Oh, this is a good idea. Actually, instead of using entity right here, I'll use id. Wait, no. Yeah, there should be two methods. One is just id. The other is given an int. Or given, actually just given a position component and a render component would work. There. Either way, it can look up the EID, get the position, the render. Okay. <laughs> if C equals arcane. And it seems to be connected to the sound effects. Huh. Just keep the Trello open. Keep closing it. That's <laughs> a whole day where we just fix the arcade seed. We're still only halfway done compiling.
Next seed will be Google. Why Google? Position component get why why does it sell Marcus as an error? Why not Google? Everyone loves Google. But it has nothing to do with Songbringer. Or or does it? Or does it? Now this should be Position component get id position p Yahoo! Yeah, there was a poopy seed. It had like three O's. It was it was horrible. It was a really horrible seed at first. But then I fixed a lot of the bugs with it. Wait a minute, Arcane, are you still there? Arcane, here's another, if you're there. Here's a really important question. Um, when you're playing your seed Arca Arcane, you get these sound effect bugs. Do you get the same bugs when you're playing a different seed? Because it might not have anything to do with your seed. Okay, I need to check that this is still working. Find closest. Where is that used? Oh, Jib uses it. When looking for targets. Nearest uses it. Right, let's see. I'll just kill some enemies. Jib will use it. Oh, you haven't tried any other seeds. Okay, so it could be, it's not necessarily that it's the, the World Seed Arcane. It could just be something on your computer, something that, or some bug in Songbringer related to your computer somehow. Jib's stuck. Because he's trying to scan over here. That's already a bug, though. It's noted. There he goes. Cool. Okay, so that's working. Good. So now I have a general fu function for doing that. So where was I applying that at? Oh, before all this, what was I even working on? Oh, right. Random jump to a name location. That's either of those things. So, so we need to get a position.
and then use position component get get all right we already know no we don't know so we'll just pass in the id for it which is going to be in direction of it get its position there my ball is distance squared to p There we go. All right, so now it should be also, it should, shouldn't be going too far away. You cannot hear music when you find an item. Is there a way for us to add a card to the unofficial category on Trello? Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, let me do that too. Um, here's the link to become a member. Where is it? Uh, invite, invite, where's the invite link? Ah, where the hell is the in invite link? Settings? Uh... Trello, invite link, where the hell is it? Does anybody know? I know there's an invite link somewhere. Select the members tab, maybe that's it. Here, invite people. Good God. There. All right, so Twitch. <clears throat> Here we go. So this should work for any of you guys. Arcane. Salad dongs. You can click this link here, this invite link, and then that will make, I think this will make you a member somehow, and then you can post your own, if you wanna post your bugs, please, yeah, please just put them here in the unofficial findings. Or if it's already a bug though, you can go and just comment on any bug too. So you just go click on any bug and you can click a comment or anything here, code, art, design, whatever. I finally found a level one dungeon and the only thing I can hear now are the sword, the background music, but not the cube traps. The cube traps, you mean the pul maybe the pulverizers? And not the door opening. That's so weird. Can I hear music when I find an item? <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't judge. <laughs> What's up, Scottish Pizza? So it was right when you swung the sword, every time.
Hmm. Bing it. What's up, TM? All right. Okay. Back to the code. Back to this. Where was I? What was I doing? I think I, uh, I think you might have. I don't know. I gotta regain context. Regain. Okay, I'm in the wrong. Oh, I'm in the wrong world. All right, let's put this back to tuxedo. Tuxedo. Been a while, yeah. Okay, so where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's gone. Oh, he's still in the lower left. Oh, he's right there in the very lower left. He's not moving. I don't know where he's going. What he's doing. He just... He loves being off the screen. Okay, first of all, let's make the open water positions. Only in, like, towards the center of the screen. So we'll get the X delta and the Y delta for the current position. And these should be no greater than a certain amount. So if XD is less than or equal to maybe six, and YD is less than or equal to five, that should change what positions get created here. Also, I haven't finished this other seed. When I enter the room full of slimes, one wizard got me down to like 10 frames a second. Huh. That's a different bug. There, it's noted on Trello. Still, he's not moving around. <laughs> And it did create a bunch of open water positions. Open water five, seven, nine. There's a bunch of these. It might, mm, it could be that it created this enemy. Why did it, no, it wouldn't have created the enemy. Hold on, if I start the game with debug on.
Yep, there he is. He's in the middle, and then he warps down to the bottom left. And from then on, he's just stuck in the bottom left. Oh, there he now he's actually in the the actual left lower left corner. Now he's gone. He's totally disappeared. All right. Well. Hmm. Let's say it's something to do with the jump or the positions. So I'll set a breakpoint when it's doing the jump. And figure out why it's it's not jumping right. It should be finding all these awesome positions to jump to, choosing one at random. Oh, see, it's not even gonna filter out far away locations. So yeah, there's there's my pause. Find all the positions with stir valve zero, which is open water. Possible shouldn't be now filled up with all these positions. Oh, what? Oh, right, right. These are all EI EIDs. Okay, good. So we have 18 different EIDs we could jump to. Yo, PFC, what's up, man? Oh, it's. It was getting the position that way? Oh. Okay, I forgot to do this other position. So the destination. Make dest a v3f, v3f dest, and then position component component get from id into dest. There, now we're using the right function. Okay, that'll work. That should work. I'll turn off breakpoints for a moment. Okay, there he's still in the middle. Yes! Oh, thank God, finally he did it. He warped to a different position. He keeps warping. He's still invisible though. He should be doing his there. He did his he did his thing. Okay, first of all, let's make it so when he's doing his his uh his shoot, he can't do a warp. So okay, go to the Garsh. Um, to his behavior, here's where he spawns a poison bubble. He needs to do a delay, like a delay of three seconds or so. So he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to do another jump within these three seconds. Shot off his bubble, he jumped. So that's where it is. He really does not shoot enough bubbles. Okay, let's let's start with some more bubbles. The timer is less than zero. Timer five. I don't know, maybe just one there. So I think this might be with the delay as well. So the delay does three seconds, the timer does some more seconds. There, he's shooting a bubble there. Shoots another bubble there. 
Now he's just not warping? Is that what it is? That totally broke his warp? Oh, okay, he's still warping. Alright, well, as far as the slowdown goes, okay on my PC, it tanks only FPS. Okay. Okay. What was this I just copied? It's the slowdown bug. So this is on the other seed as well, so it has nothing to do with your world seed. Okay. All right, thanks for the info. Okay, so he should now be doing more poison bubbles. The next thing I want to do is make the poison bubble set a vector directly towards the player. Alright, so next up, yeah, next thing is to make it so it this vector. So we need we might need a, a word for this. So in behaviors. Do I have a behavior vector yet? No, I don't. So I do need another word. All right, well, let's get this hooked up. Get this compiling. Okay, behavior vector. Put that in constants. Alright, so that'll get compiled. Amazon's game engine, huh? Called Lumberyard. Why is it called Lumberyard? Amazon Game Dev. How can they be deeply integrated with Twitch? Twitch chat play. So you got you can drive and jog visual scripting and create create gameplay features and little minutes that let Twitch viewers use chat to directly impact the game. So basically they just they're doing their twit their Twitch plays. I see. And the Twitch join in feature helps you pull games that let Twitch broadcasters to instantly invite their live audiences to join them side by side in the game. Interesting. 
Interesting. And it's free, huh? No seed fees, no subscription fees, no requirements to share revenue. Wow. That's interesting. This is a really interesting looking game engine. Okay, we've got this vector. Okay, um, what's next? Uh, <laughs> the sloth and the cat. It's funny. Oh, that's right. Amazon bought Twitch. I forgot. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Good night, Hardboiled. Yeah, the visual scripting thing, yeah. I was gathering that from the, the page there. Cool. That sounds like a really good engine actually to use. It's awesome it's free too. Okay, the poison bubble. First thing it needs is an AI component. The flags. Vector movement. The next thing is the behavior when it... Actually, no. When it launches a particle... Yeah, when it launches a particle, that would be in start shot which is a method of attack system. So attack system start shot. So when it creates an entity, this is where it, like, it will create the poison bubble, for example. Here's where it creates the AI. There's the shot. So let's, let's see if this works. If shot.ai.hat or flags, why isn't this working? Come on. Come on. Why is it not working? Jesus. Come on. Autocomplete's just totally broken now. It doesn't even work. This worries me. Oh my god, I'm closing Xcode. See if it works now. There, thank God. If it has AI vector movement, we can confirm this, set a breakpoint. So now when it launches a poison bubble, we should hit this breakpoint. This will be the first phase of confirming this is working. Hello, Sato. Welcome to the stream. Yes, good. Right when it launched the poison bubble, we hit this breakpoint. That means it's working. Great, great, great. So if it does have this AI vector movement flag, 
here's where we give it a instead of giving it a direction, we're going to give it a vector. Oh, shoot, but we need to know what we're what we're firing at because we need to have a separate method for start shot. Ah, oh, shazzle. Seto, what's going on here? I'm working on this this enemy. This is a water enemy. He's a little fish shark. His name is the, is the Karsh, and he's firing these poison bubbles. See that? He fires a little. This is the little guy in the middle of the screen. He's a fish. He fires a poison bubble. Right now, his, po his poison bubbles come in only eight different directions, compass directions. Um, but what I want him to do is to fire his projectiles at any angle, so they can just have this vector movement. So I'm working on the code to make these bubbles fly at any angle. So there's a parent which launches it. The parent, I guess we could grab the parent's target. Where is it auto already this? Man, I'm starting to get hungry already. Yeah, here's where it's launching from the AI system. The AI system launches the shot, calls start shot. It determines the direction beforehand. Launch uses its last compass direction. E dot move to last compass direction. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it from the target. So it has a target. We've already loaded the, t the parent actually. Parent target, so um, create a system entity called like F or whatever, based on the parent dot AI dot target. I guess we'll just call it target. <laughs> Target, duh. Yeah, so instead of using the dir down here, it's going to use this. So this is the applying the direction. Here's where we're going to use the vector movement. Here's where we make sure that it's not stuck initially. All right, so based on the target's position, we're going to grab the vector base. Uh, that would be, yeah, we get the vector.
Yeah, and then e or shot dot ai dot vec equals. Well, first we want to normalize this. There. So there, it's applied a vector to this entity as well as a direction. So it has both the direction and the end. Well. I guess that should be there. And this should have its own set flip X based on There are none. Vector from compass direction, yeah. So this will work with either west or east. So this is the regular directional movement. So yeah, we got two different systems of setting up initial movement here. One uses the direction, so a compass direction. The other uses a vector. I believe these are both good. Now from now on, apply input. E dot AI dot flags. Come on. There we go. Flags and K vector movement. We're going to return. So this method should never run for AI that has vector movement. The last thing is to take the E, the direction based on, I guess this is going to be based on the inputs. Yeah, the input component. Now this is going to be a move system. This is the last piece of the puzzle. It's actually getting move system to use There it is. Start movement. Hello, Retarius, what's up, man? Boy, 
Woogie, what's up, man? Yo. Okay, so this last bit, I'm, ma I'm making it so the input um, or the movement system looks at not only does it look at what what um what input is being applied like for example you know there's left right up down you know on your buttons and all that it's either, it either looks at that or it can look at the ai's movement vector so that's the next thing is to get the movement vector also being applied in here Okay, so let's first determine if we're going to use the movement vector. So that's if it has an AI component and it's also using this flag. Let's determine that up here. So if we've got a compass direction, or actually, let's do this. Let's check for vector movement, and let's make sure that the e.ai.vec e is not zero. So there, if use AI vector. So, and then, yes, last thing here, if we were using the AI vector, we just use it, e.ai.vec is our vector, otherwise using vector from compass direction. Twitch has been a fan tart. What? A fart tart. Oh, fart tart. I know there's no chat up there because the because Twitch has their new chat replay thing, and the chat replay is sits on top of the other text, so I just have it disabled for now. How did you actually learn game programming? Uh, I learned, but from books. Yeah, I learned from books. So this is 20 years ago, before we really had the internet. We had all this awesome resources you ha you guys have today. So I learned from books a long, long time ago. C++ isn't very human readable, right? That's C++ for you. Yes! Oh, check it out! The vector movement is working! He's shooting the bubbles at angles now. Oh! Yeah, today has actually turned out to be something, something's working already. Yay. So the fish surfaces, he shoots the bubble. Okay, I want him to shoot more bubbles. He's really, he's a bad aim. Oh, that's probably because it's, I'm basing the vector based on, let's go back to where it creates the vector. Let's get this guy to be dead accurate at first. Then I can make him willy nilly after that. Worse than assembly? Oh, brain fuck? Yeah, definitely the worst language ever to try and read. 
There's one that's even worse, I think, than than Brainfuck, where it just uses white space. Or maybe is that maybe that's what Brainfuck is. Books are still awesome. That's right. And there's a lot of action in that pawn. So, uh, it was, where was it? AI, this is AI system where it, no, this is a tax system where it starts. Yeah, all right, here it is. Okay, so not the target position, but the shot position. Or no, it's the target position minus the shot position. Because the shot can be spawned a little bit different position. Yeah, okay, I get, oh sweet, I got hit. Got hit. Keep spawning in the same place. Come on, move somewhere else, buddy. There we go. Shoots another shot. Misses! Missed again. Oh, what's wrong with this? The target should be right. This is me, the hero. He hits a good deal all the time, it looks like. Alright, next thing, I'm gonna kinda ignore this for a second and focus on getting the fish to surface. Sometimes he surfaces on the ground. I'm wondering what's up with that. Yeah, white space programming language, that's the one. Try reading that. I dare you. Oh, I got an idea. Okay, so right now it places all the open water positions. Um, and I'm logging out all their, where they are. It'd be way better to just use a, a single pixel render component. So I could see where all these are. He's, he's hitting jib. Maybe he's. Oh, maybe he was going for jib. You'll stick with C sharp. Right on. C sharp's a great, high, nice, high level language. All right, there we go. There's all the spots where it should have water. Definitely not warping to these. Oh, I forgot the jump command. Okay. The jump command isn't working because it's not working perfectly because it actually does a jump, it does a velocity based jump. So when it does the jump it need, and it has a jump of zero, which means don't use strength.
So here's going to be an immediate warp. So if float val z or one equals zero, we're going to do an immediate warp. Otherwise, um, this is a velocity based jump. Okay, so this is going to be e dot move dot or e dot position pause equals dist. That's it. It's pretty easy. So if you're just tuning into this stream, um, what I'm working on is a water-based enemy that shoots uh, things at, a, at an angle. So this, what's, what's unique about this enemy is it's a lot different than other enemies, than any of the other enemies that's been created. That's why it's taken so long to finish this enemy. First of all, he warps around. He goes from different spot to different spot. Um, second of all, he shoots these little projectiles at an angle which is different than any other enemy. So far all the other enemies have used compass directions. So now it's working. Good. He's working. He's warping perfectly to every one of these positions where the red dots are. And he's the red square. Sometimes you can't see him because he's invisible. He's underneath the water just swimming around or whatever. Okay, so that's why he wasn't he wasn't accurately on that's why he was sometimes accidentally on the land. Hello Rezi Yak Black. Welcome to the stream. Alright, so that's a good start. It's a good start for this enemy. I'm really starving now, so I'm going to go get some lunch and take a break and stuff. So that's going to be it for today's stream. Um, but yeah, this enemy is coming along. Um, I'll finish him up here in the next, in the rest of this evening. But another cool thing in the game I'll show you guys before I go is this... Uh, I'll turn off all the debug information, but... Now the player has this ability called, called Shield. And if you're standing there... Your shield can go off if you're if you're totally sitting um, and you're not moving so if you're moving at all or you're using your weapons or whatever you can still be hurt see that that guy hurt me as I was throwing but if I stand here I'll use my shield and it only works for a small amount too of damage so like half a heart or whatever of damage it works just like the Legend of Zelda shield, except the one difference between this and the Legend of Zelda shield is that in Zelda, your shield worked only if you were facing the direction that the damage was coming from. So, so it was like a real shield. This is like an all-encompassing 360-degree shield. So I'm I'm up in the air whether this should be that way. So is he shooting the vines too? No, no, the vines are a separate enemy. Yeah, it's just the car. The, the shark guy is the thing shooting the bubbles, and the red dots are not supposed to be on the screen. So yeah, maybe next time I'll do we'll do a straw poll on whether this the shield should be um, should be 360 degrees or like 180 degrees, something like that. So yeah, have a good night, you guys. Enjoy yourselves, and I'll be streaming next time. Same, always the same time. Wizard, wizards. Stream time is usually 2 to 4, something like that, Pacific time. So see everybody, have a good night, and enjoy yourselves.